impact of poverty, the impact of inequality means that their life will be sicker. It will be, um, it, it will be spread through more bouts, both of ill health and the things that ill health does. We've got to change that. We've got to change a situation of a 93-year-old woman living in Russia, not far down the road from it, who is she's partly deaf, part, partially blind. She, next week, will go to five different clinical institutions for her health care. That's wrong, uh, because we've wrapped people around services, not services around people. And whilst, let me say this, the last Labour government did some amazing things in terms of health. The, the money um, transformed a, a lot of our institutions. We trained doctors and nurses, and those were great achievements of the last Labour government. We got some things very wrong. And one of the things that we did get wrong, um, was the introduction of, of foundation hospitals. I voted against those, and I voted against them, touching on exactly the point I have made. If that was the process that allowed this present government, even under the last Labour government, to see competition between our different health providers distort what the health, health, the health system ought to be about. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got to change that, and we are changing. Actually, the devolution deal in Greater Manchester means now we've take, we're, take, we're already taking the competition out we're beginning to take the market out in that way. Decisions made for Greater Manchester are made within Greater Manchester. It's really important. Yes, Ivan, you're right, we've got to prioritise mental health. It wasn't even done by the last Labour government. And I've been railing against that as a Member of Parliament in the centre for the last 30 years. We've now got a mental health and wellbeing strategy in Greater Manchester. Michael McCourt, the uh, Chief Executive of the Pennine uh, Mental Health Trust, actually went on record to thank me personally for my leadership in making sure we've got the right people around the table to begin to deliver that change structure. And that matters because, I think you're right, leadership matters. It's there already. But I've got to say as well, we've got to make other changes. Yes, we've got to integrate health and social care. Last Labour government had great ambitions. It didn't deliver because it was too centralised. Actually, decentralisation to the level of Greater Manchester keeps our NHS together and it allows for localism and delivery. Decisions made in Greater Manchester a former in Greater Manchester, made here in Greater Manchester. That is really important in terms of the quality of delivery, and that's how we can bring local authorities and health providers together to make that kind of difference. That matters. But, you know, the biggest ambition is something that the founders of the NHS saw as, as the real challenge. The NHS, delivering health, isn't just about health provision. It's about housing. It's about transport. It's about uh, things like clean air. It's making sure we use every aspect of our public service delivery to transport the life chances and the health chances of the people of this city region of us. That's the big challenge. It's one for the first time because we've not got bureaucratic central government 200 miles away making silo decisions in different departments. We're bringing those decision makers together to make that kind of change. That's why the Greater Manchester Reform Board, which I chair, is bringing the voluntary sector and the different public sector players together to transform what we're doing. For the first time, we'll be addressing the real health needs and not simply an ill health service.